This storm system could cause major problems. Tropical Storm Jerry, heavy rain and U.S. flood threats welcome to the weather forecast on VTB Tien 8 channel. Hello everyone. Today we're taking a look at a weather system that I think could become a potential threat in the coming days. That's not an exaggeration. And it's still early days, but when the weather starts talking, we have a responsibility to listen. Let's find out what might happen. Right now, off the coast of the tropical seas, there's a low pressure system or disturbance that forecasters are paying close attention to. According to forecast models, this system currently has a 70% chance of developing into a tropical storm, and if it progresses as expected, it could be named Jerry. Most early indicators suggest that as it moves toward the Lesser Antilles, the small islands in the Eastern Caribbean, it has the potential to become stronger and more defined, a traditional tropical storm like we've seen in previous seasons. If you've followed previous hurricane seasons, you know there's no shortage of these systems. This year is no exception. We've seen a number of eddies and disturbances, many of which have progressed to full-fledged hurricanes. And now, Jerry could be the next one. At this stage, on satellite and radar imagery, it's just a spot, a loose, undefined vortex. But don't let the spot fool you. The GFS and other models all show it can intensify rapidly as it's fed by ocean heat and other favorable conditions. Current forecasts suggest Jerry could turn north, heading toward the Caribbean, the Bahamas, and potentially impact or impact the U.S. coast. But there are also, safer, scenarios, where the storm veers far out into the ocean, or, loses steam, before making landfall. It's important to note, all of this is still in its early stages. The model can change a lot, and history has shown that any storm can turn, from its original forecast. We can't say for sure that Jerry will be like previous storms, but we'll definitely have to keep an eye on it. First. Let's look at the GFS model, one of the major meteorological models that forecasters use. According to the GFS, on Wednesday, October 8, the storm will be very close to Bridgetown and the Lesser Antilles. At that point, it will begin to take on a distinct shape, more swirling, more defined structure, more intense rain. After that, the model predicts the storm will curve northward, and on Saturday, October 11, it could begin to reverse course, rotate, that is, from south to north. If this scenario plays out, Jerry could sustain or develop into a Category 3 or higher hurricane, a serious storm that should not be taken lightly. A slight difference from fish, storms, storms that do not directly hit the mainland, Jerry could stay east of Bermuda, or even lost in the middle of nowhere, that is. Moving over the ocean without hitting land, that doesn't rule out the possibility of it affecting coastal areas or small islands along the way, though. If you haven't heard the term fish storm, that's when a storm doesn't make landfall, but is mostly in the middle of the ocean. Jerry could be a fish in the GFS model if it continues to track as it does. In addition to Jerry and the Eastern Disturbance, we have another system that could potentially impact us from the West, Hurricane Priscilla in the Pacific. While Priscilla is working in the West, another storm system could form off the Carolina, East Coast, Coast. This system could become more defined and start to impact us over the weekend, the Outer Banks could see heavy rain, strong thunderstorms and coastal flooding. A Miller, Nor'easter type storm is possible, a storm that moves along the northeast coast of the U.S., bringing heavy rain, strong winds, and coastal flooding. In this scenario, Long Island, New Jersey, Rhode Island, and Cape Cod all need to be watched. Current modeling suggests the system could be relatively strong, although its motion and intensity will change a lot over the next few days. While Jerry is the center of attention, the weather over land won't be sleeping, either, especially in the Midwest, the South Central, and along the Mississippi River Valley, Ohio. The area from Cincinnati through Louisville, Paducah, Owensboro is likely to see heavy rain, even localized flash flooding. 
Cities along the Mississippi like Memphis. Jonesboro will also see significant rainfall. There may even be a level 2 heavy rain warning out of 5, which equates to a moderate risk, not immediately catastrophic. But enough to cause travel and daily life difficulties. The rain will move east, affecting my area, Pikeville, Kentucky, extending up Moorhead, the I-64 corridor between Louisville and Charleston, up to Cincinnati and down to Nashville. There will be periods of heavy rain, strong thunderstorms, and the risk of localized flash flooding is definitely possible. Radar forecasts for the next 36 hours or so show a broad, west-east swath of rain, with pockets of concentrated rain. Thunderstorms today could be moderate, with wind gusts of 30 to 40 miles per hour, 48 to 64 kilometers per hour. However, there are no clear signs of hail or severe tornadoes, which should ease some concerns. The overall picture is one of sustained. Accumulated rain, meaning enough to swell streams and small rivers, not a destructive storm. The good news, many of the areas where the rain will fall are currently experiencing drought. So this rain, if not too intense, will be a friend in improving soil moisture, providing water for crops, and reducing drought stress. The hotspot area of interest. Central Kentucky, from Maysville through Lexington, and especially north of Bowling Green, according to the Weather Prediction Center's latest QPF map. Areas from Memphis to Cincinnati are at risk. If you live in purple, red, or orange areas on the map, Keep an eye out for streams and ditches over the next few days. The extended model suggests rain from this system will move up the northeast around Wednesday or earlier. However, the region won't see any sustained flooding rain, most of it will ease as it moves into Thursday. Priscilla could become a powerful hurricane as it crosses Baja California and picks up moisture from the ocean. As the storm approaches or is swept ashore, it could drench Arizona, Colorado, Oklahoma, Texas, and Kansas with a lot of moisture. Forecasts call for 5, 6, and even 7 inches of rain over the next 7 to 10 days, which could cause serious flash flooding in mountain slopes, desert basins, dry stream channels, and other areas where soils have lost their ability to absorb water. While some areas that need rain, like drought-stricken areas, will be happy if it comes in too much too quickly. Flash flooding is likely, so people in Arizona, New Mexico, the Oklahoma-Texas Basin, and southwest Kansas should keep an eye on detailed rainfall forecasts in the coming days. Another thing we need to keep an eye on, not just storms and rain, is temperatures and high and low pressure. Over the next 10 days, the Midwest, the Plains, the Ohio Valley, the Lake District, and southern Michigan will continue to see above-average temperatures. In other words, warmer than normal for fall. Meanwhile, in the western United States, California, Oregon, a large low-pressure mass has emerged. It is slowly creeping toward the Rockies, creating a trough and potentially forming new weather systems for the central United States. In other words, we may be waiting for the tipping point when the high, low pressure pattern changes direction. The weather could change dramatically in the next one to two weeks. Right now, we are in a stagnant phase, enjoying this lull before new changes come. So to recap, we have a new system that has the potential to become a hurricane, likely named Jerry and its track has the potential to impact the Caribbean, Bahamas, and possibly the U.S. coast. On land, areas from the Midwest to the Southeast are facing heavy rain and the risk of localized flash flooding over the next few days, especially in Kentucky, Tennessee, Ohio, Mississippi. To the West, Hurricane Priscilla could bring moisture inland, bringing heavy rain to Arizona, Colorado, Oklahoma, Texas, and southwestern Kansas. Additionally, a nor'easter storm system could form off the northeast, affecting coastal New England over the weekend. Temperatures will be above average in many places over the next 10 days or so. But the overall pressure and pattern are in a wait-and-see phase where things can change quickly if the high, low pressure shifts. 
This is a time when you should pay close attention to weather reports, especially if you live in a border area or an area that gets a lot of rain. If you're in an expected rain area, purple, red, orange on the map, keep an eye on small streams, ditches, and local drainage systems. When the rain comes, it can overflow faster than you think. If you're in the southwest or the interior desert, don't discount what may seem like a salvation in the amount of rain. If it comes too quickly, it can cause flash floods and landslides. And remember, what we know today can change tomorrow. Weather models are tools, not immutable predictions. I'll continue to update as new models are released, and as Jerry, Priscilla, or the Northeast Coastal System sheds more light. If you like this video, please share it with your friends, family, and on social media. Comment in the comments below. I really appreciate it. Please subscribe to the channel to follow. Thank you for watching the news on BTB10A channel.